Well, hey guys, welcome back to Train World TV and our exclusive series on how to build a layout from start to finish. Today we're taking a look at something very simple. It's districting your layout. But in order to show you how to do it, we're going to have to show you some parts of the layout. So let's get started on how to district your layout. Now, if you have a really small and simple layout, this isn't necessary. But the larger your layout is, the more chance there is for something to go wrong. And one of the main things that goes wrong with a layout is a short. Now a short is simply when two areas of the track have a bridged connection for some reason. Whether that's a bad wheel set, whether a piece of metal gets put across the track and bridges that connection to make the one side of the DCC signal connect to the other, that is what's going to cause a short. If you have a tiny layout, no problem. No need for districting. You can just diagnose where that short is. Take off all the rolling stock. Remove that from the layout. Look for any metal shavings or pieces that is making that bridge happen. But the larger the layout you get, the more concerning it is. And you want to do what's called districting. And it's pretty simple to do. What you're going to do is get what's called Atlas insulation joiners. And those are plastic rail joiners, similar to the metal ones you see here. They're just plastic, clear plastic insulation joiners. And you make a point where you're gonna have a district break. So I have one right here at the bridge, but because there's no connections, it's not needed because it's a bridge. But I have another district break down here, and that, is where these plastic joiners come in. So this is a district break. And what I did is as close to where I could as possible, I put these clear plastic rail joiners. You see them there. Now what does that do? That breaks up the signal, the DCC signal, to where you have to wire it from your DCC system. And I'm gonna show you a diagram here that shows you what a district diagram looks like so you know how to wire it. Now that includes circuit breakers which we'll talk about in our next video but you're essentially running power from your DCC system to each district over and over again. That way if there's a problem you can simply disconnect one district and see if the problem goes away and your DCC system is no longer shorting and then reconnect it and disconnect another district until you find that district that is causing the problem and then you can start diagnosing. So let's say this district was isolated and it had a problem. Because of these isolation joiners here, I know that this part has no problem because when it's powered, it's fine. But when this section's powered, there's a problem. So now I can run around and look and try to find what is wrong with the actual track. What's going on? Why is there a short? And as I scour the track back and forth, I'm looking for anything that could bridge a connection. Little metal shavings, like I said, or anything. And oop, what do we have here? A screw laying on the track that's metal that would be bridging that connection and causing a short. Now, next week, or next episode, I should say, we'll be talking about circuit breakers because depending on what is on your track that could actually cause so much of a problem that it shorts out your DCC system it can overload your DCC system and trip the breaker on it or damage it so we'll be talking about circuit breaker protection but this episode although short is about how to district your layout and that is the simplest way with these isolation joiners I have four districts on this layout, so where I have a problem, I can just simply go through and check those districts. Now, with a circuit breaker, it'll actually trip that circuit breaker, and you can see it a lot easier, and we'll talk about that next week. So again, here is the diagram of how I broke up my layout into four districts and then how you would wire that with circuit breakers. Next week we'll talk about circuit breakers in more detail, but that is districting your layout. 
So that is why you want to district it, and how you district it, and then how you troubleshoot any short that you might find. Now the diagram you saw included circuit breakers, but if you don't want circuit breaker protection, simply remove them from the diagram. You can use the different barrier strips to still send power to each district and then simply disconnect those if you have a problem. You can make as many districts as you want. It's really just how many do you need, and I have determined I need four for my layout on the main line. Now you're also going to want different districts if you have lots of yards because, for example, my last layout, all of a sudden the whole layout shorted out and I didn't know what was wrong. Well, I disconnected the entire turntable and roundhouse area after lots of not being able to run trains because I couldn't figure out what was going on, and that ended up being the problem. Now if I had that on its own district, I could have disconnected that district and saw that that was a problem and still ran trains for a while with just four or five simple disconnect and reconnect steps of those districts. So in this layout, there'll be four districts for the main line, and there's going to be a district for one yard and a district for another yard, so that if there's any problems in those yards, shorts, etc., a simple disconnect of that district will be able to tell me that. Now, the beautiful thing about circuit breakers is they have little status LEDs, and you can hook up LEDs to where they're visible from right where you're working with your trains and running your trains on the layout, but we'll get into that in the next episode. So hopefully you understand why district districting is needed for larger layouts. It essentially helps you troubleshoot uh, any shorts and explained, I also explained to you what a short is and how to go about getting rid of a short. So hopefully you learned a little bit about that in this video and we'll see you next time right here on Train World TV. Take care.